The brand new Lincoln Nautilus has one of the craziest screens in the entire automotive world. It is also, in many ways, one of the more interesting cars that I've driven recently. So in this video, we're gonna go and we're gonna walk around the new Nautilus. We're gonna talk about its fuel economy, its pricing. We're gonna show you the interesting things and the not so interesting things. So let's start with styling as we always do. Now, Lincoln has gone much more, dare I say, aero, dare I say, elegant. And unfortunately, in this bright sun, I can't show you this, but this Lincoln Star is backlit, and when you unlock the car, two little LEDs chase themselves this way or that way to give you what Lincoln calls the Lincoln Embrace. It's somewhat entertaining, and it'll certainly entertain your neighbors. And of course, nowadays, with what Tesla has done, you got to have something that you can kind of TikTok or Instagram to show your friends that you've got something that's different. And this car is certainly different. And I like the styling direction that, of course, Lincoln has gone. Now, the Lincoln lineup encompasses only four cars. There's the Corsair, which is the smallest, the Nautilus, the Aviator, which is a small three row, and of course, the Navigator. So this car starts at around $52,000 if you get the Premier, 56 if you go up to the Reserve, and then 75 and up for the Black Label. Uh, it encompasses quite a spread. It competes with cars like the Lexus RX, the BMW X5, give or take. In other words, kind of mid-sized to smallish crossovers that are two rows. Let me know in the comments below if you like this color because I am a sucker for red. And whenever I review a red car, I have to be honest, it just pulls up my heartstrings. Now, here we're rolling on 21-inch uh, tires. Uh, which are, you know, very big for a car in this category. Uh, and the ride, well, the ride I can't talk about because that review is coming up still. So right now we're just gonna do a complete walk around. So let's start under the hood because I bet you're curious how much power this has. Now this is the hybrid Nautilus, which has 310 horsepower and is all wheel drive. But you can also get a non-hybrid version with a four cylinder Oh, I forgot again, I gotta pull it twice. BMW and now Ford are doing that double pull to open the hood, which actually is a smart thing because uh, it means you won't be driving down the highway and the hood's gonna go flying up. Anyway, this is uh, the hybrid, but there is a four cylinder turbo that puts out, th that puts out 250 horsepower paired to an eight speed automatic. Uh, this CVT uh, vehicle gets better fuel economy, Lincoln says. Uh, if you're driving at normally about 30 mpg, uh, which is, you know, pretty respectable for a car uh, that Lincoln says has the most rear legroom of any car in its class. So before we get to the front, because it does have that crazy screen, which I'm sure you're going to want to see, let me sit in the back and see if that's true. Keep in mind I am on the taller side at 6'2". So back here I should have uh, plenty of legroom and plenty of headroom. Uh, certainly plenty of uh, legroom. Headroom, you know, it's okay. Uh, we've got this giant panoramic sunroof, uh, and that does tend to take away about an inch or an inch and a half of headroom, but I would be comfortable back here. I could see myself cross-country tripping this. We also have uh, heated seats back here, which is a nice touch. You'll note these, like, very luxurious, uh, very... Uh, elegant controls. You'll find those sprinkled throughout the car. And then Cole, let's show him the Burmeister-like speakers and speaker covers. Lincoln says that the top line version of this car has, I think, 23 speakers, which is, they love to say it, but best in class. So I do like that uh, very designed, very architectural look uh, to the speaker cover. It does make it feel like it's a premium vehicle. And of course, Lincoln considers itself a premium vehicle. All right, let's check out the back. See how much room is in the back here? Where's our little button? There it is. I've got my backpack back here. That's good, look at this. That's a lot of room in here, actually. And as always, let's see what's hiding underneath. Uh, space saver, small kind of donut. I guess you're not gonna fit a 21 inch <laughs> tire back there. You also have uh, reclinable rear seats. 
which is nice, um, especially since they're electric. And I'm going to crawl back there without hopefully losing my shirt and exposing my belly to you. Now I know you all want to see that. So let's see how much room. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. I could actually sleep back here. Not that many people will. But if I had to, I certainly could. All right, well, now that we've gone through kind of the basic part of the review, let me show you what makes this car special. Oh, before I do that, also one other thing. I kind of feel like uh, Lincoln, in a lot of ways, copied Tesla with their own flair. And one of the ways they did that is, of course, this door handle that's built in. Now, this is not the first time I've seen this, but as you know, uh, Tesla was early on, and you can see that it's unlocked right there. That's kind of cool. Uh, early on in uh, changing kind of the basic design of things. Uh, and for the better or for the worse, it kind of made a reputation for the brand as being unique and quirky. And this car kind of has that same thing. So, you know, there's a little pull here. You push, door opens, and there you go. Another favorite feature of mine, of course, is this very customizable uh, seat. Dare I say too customizable? You can actually move these, like you can actually move these little leg uh, thigh bolsters independently of each other. So, you know, if you've got a, like me, one leg is fatter than the other, it's perfect. <laughs> also, there's a whole bunch of other adjustments, uh, maybe almost too many. It, it can get quite uh, daunting because you can you can move these bolsters. Uh, you can also do lumbar support in three different places on the back of the seat. It's a lot. All right, let's jump inside and show them the screen. All right. All right, here's the first thing I'm going to show you. And once I show you this, you won't be able to unsee it. Look at the steering wheel. It's kind of yoke-like, but the first time I saw this, I thought to myself, this steering wheel is upside down. This part that kind of protrudes down should protrude up. And now every time I look at the steering wheel, I kind of feel like it should be the other way around. All right, that's my own personal observation. So let's uh, look at what's in front of you. You've got not one, not two, but probably at least eight screens because this is all one giant screen with multiple screens hiding inside of it. So let me start it up. Uh, and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. I mean, look at this. It's a virtual panorama of screens. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five screens uh, in one that let you do a whole bunch of cool stuff. So let's talk about the cool stuff you can do in that. First and foremost is this. So you hit this little icon here, and then you've got a whole bunch of different things that you can add to the screen. So right now I've got navigation, I've got fuel economy, as you can see, and I've got my trip too. And we've been driving here outside of Palm Springs in the hills, so we're averaging uh, 20.3, which is you know a far cry from the 30 it's supposed to get, but you've been going uphill for most of the way. But if you want to change what's on the screen, all you do is, let's say I want my tire pressure where that trip odometer is, you just pull it and drag it, and you'll see uh, your tire pressure. Pretty cool. Or let's say you want your media now where my fuel economy is, uh, same thing, drag it to the fuel economy, and you've got Spotify playing. Uh, same thing with the clock, if you want to see what time it is. There's your clock, and then of course you can rearrange all this to your heart's content or have the kiddos do it. Um, you know, I'm kind of torn. It might be a little too much screen. Uh, another thing that they've copied off of Tesla besides the yoke-like steering wheel uh, is the HVAC controls, and you're wondering, you know, you're wondering where are the... Uh, you know, where are my little controls for the vents? Well, they're hiding in the screen. Cole, do you remember where that is? Because I forgot. Thank you, Cole. You are the best. Uh, and then, of course, just like a Tesla, you can change where the air goes left or right, up or down. Uh, and I'm not in love with that. I just wish it was just a regular little pull. But, you know, once again, sometimes you copy Tesla at your own peril. Um, the other things that I do like um, are these buttons. Uh, they feel very expensive. And as a guy who's, you know, getting up in age and is frightened of new things, I really like that you've got this giant volume knob, which lets you easily adjust the volume. So thank you, Lincoln, uh, for thinking of me. Uh, here you have uh, different drive modes. So we have normal, conserve, excite. 
sounds vaguely sexual, slippery, uh, and uh, deep conditions. Uh, and that obviously that adjusts the throttle response. Uh, if you've got the eight-speed automatic, probably the shift points, uh, so that you can you know conserve energy. You can go and have a fun drive in the excite mode. Sorry, I lost it there. The weird thing is I would expect this to like most cars now when you push that button, including the Ford Mustang, it changes it. Here you actually have to go into the screen and uh, push it. Um, multiple camera angles, uh, actually pretty nice because you've got this big screen to display them into. And then uh, one of the things that's probably uh, one of the more cool features that's coming uh, is this Lincoln Spa. Uh, and unfortunately, it's not in the early cars, but it's coming. So what we'll do is we'll edit that into this video so you can see what the Lincoln Spa is, which uses uh, both uh, sight, sound, feel, and smell uh, to turn the interior into a rejuvenating spa. So let's roll that video. As you guys can tell, I'm in a different Nautilus right now, and this has a feature that I like to call the Lincoln Spa, and it takes advantage of not just sight, not just sound, not just feel, but also smell. They call it rejuvenate, and the way it works is basically you park your car, and then you can pick the Aura Borealis, which is one of the different rejuvenating programs. You can do five or ten minutes, and let me just show you. I'll hit five minutes, and uh, I'll hit continue, and as you can see, the steering wheel kind of scoots in. The seat starts to recline backwards, and then all of a sudden the massaging feature comes on, and next thing you know, I am in a full-blown spa with my back being massaged, cold air wafting in my face, but it's not just cold air, it's the smell of a mystic forest that's wafting in my face. Uh, and of course the seat heat coming on or off, uh, let me show you. It, gives you a little preview exactly of what's happening. So there's a seat going back, there's a steering wheel being pulled back one more time. There's the temperature changing, um, heated seats, massage, the little scent thing, and you go through the relax part and it does an invigorate part after this. Uh, and so what makes this so nice is you can just kind of sit back, relax after a hard day of work, and enjoy the Lincoln Spa. Let me know in the comments, is this a gimmick or is this something you would use? All right, let's go back to the car. And if you're wondering where the scents live, uh, they live right here. Um, there's three of them there. And uh, my favorite out of those is Mystic Forest, which smells like, uh, you know, like the last airbender <laughs> was in your car. <laughs> that's a last airbender reference. Uh, another thing that's kind of unusual is uh, Lincoln with this design says it wants you to keep your eyes above the uh, screen and so what they have done uh, is they have designed uh, these buttons which don't have any markings on except of course cruise control and the way that it works is if you can see there when I touch it uh, it allows me to in this case move my volume up and down or forward the track back and forth uh, or you know let's just give this a try let's see if this works I go left or do voice commands. Okay, I better pause that or I'm going to get copyright issues. And on this side, you have cruise control. Uh, and one of the features that is available in this car uh, is, there you go, you can see it, is uh, Blue Cruise, uh, which is Ford's or Lincoln's um, autonomous or semi autonomous driving. Uh, and I've done that quite a bit. Uh, I don't think it's quite as good as GM's, uh, but uh, it's very good. Uh, it allows you to, you know, hands, eyes up, watches your eyes, hands off the wheel, go down the highway. Uh, still have to be ready to take control, but the car actually will drive itself for the most part, given, you know, the right conditions, the right light. There's a lot of ifs, uh, but in general, it does a good job, and they keep improving it. When we first had it on our Ford Lightning, uh, the truck would tend to kind of ping pong in the lane. The latest versions I've driven, which I, I suspect this has much better, uh, does things like, you know, keeps you in the center of the lane as opposed to kind of ping-ponging out the side of the lanes. Uh, now, some other features um, that I like in this car, uh, and probably my favorite thing about this car, is just the uh, uh, soft touch materials that are everywhere. Uh, it's a very pleasant, uh, dare I say, elegant car uh, to be in. Everything you touch, I mean, everything you see is very uh, soft. No hard edges, no elephant skin, nothing that would... Uh, take you away from being in a 
upscale car. Here's a bit of a pop quiz to close off this video. Which one of these four is a Nautilus? Can you name it? Did you get it? That quickly. It's hard, isn't it? Because they're all so very similar. Well, guys, thanks for watching. As always, head on over to alltfl.com, where I'll be doing a review of all these cars with my man Sophie on from Redline Reviews. Uh, so be sure to check that out, and I will see you guys next time. Ciao.